In this video, I will be showing you how to create the cabinet case using Onshape. You should have already completed the face frame, part studio, and the face frame assembly, as well as the drawing. Before we get started with making the case, let's organize some of these files. Click the plus arrow, select create folder, and create a folder called face frame. Once you've done this, place the assembly and the face frame, part studio, into the folder. Drag the folder to the left side. You should now have a folder called face frame and one drawing file. Don't drag the drawing file into the folder because the drawing file will be a compilation of all of the drawings you make. Select the plus arrow, create a new folder, and name it case as the next set of components we're going to build are the case. Select the case folder and create a new part studio. This part studio will hold all the files required to create the case. Start by making a sketch on the front plane. From here, flatten the sketch out. You're going to sketch what you see in the front view of the provided drawing. Start by sketching one large rectangle. This large rectangle follows the overall dimensions of the case, which is 16. by 23. Organize these dimensions so that they're neat and easy to read. Once you've done this, you can draw the case sides. Start by using a corner rectangle tool. Go from the lower left corner of the large rectangle you've drawn to the top line. Do the same on the other side of the assembly. Once you've done this, you can dimension both of these. The thickness of these parts is 3 quarters of an inch. or 0.75. Now that these have been drawn in, we need to draw the upper stretcher. Select the corner rectangle tool, and this piece fits in between the two side pieces. This should be dimensioned to 3 quarters of an inch, or 0.75. Once completed with that, we need to put in the lower shelf. Use the corner rectangle tool, zoom in, and draw the corner rectangle on the inside of both of the sides of the project. The dimension of the dado that is going to be cut from the side to the shelf is a quarter of an inch. Type in one quarter of an inch and click enter. Do the same on the other side of the project, 0.25, and locate the shelf 2 and 7 eighths, or 2.875, from the bottom edge. You'll notice this line here is still blue. The thickness of the shelf bottom has not been determined. This needs to be 0 0.750. When creating the extrusions, it's helpful to use the scissors tool or trim command, which is the shortcut of clicking M on the keyboard, to trim out the area of the dado that needs to be cut on the sides. This is an extra step, but it's helpful when extruding your parts and pieces in the next step. You can see now, I have a fully defined sketch. All my lines are black and everything is properly dimensioned. The dados, are a quarter of an inch deep. The bottom is three quarters of an inch thick and located 2.875 from the very bottom of the cabinet to the top of the bottom. Both plywood sides are 0.75 thick. The overall width of the cabinet is 16 and the overall height is 23. The thickness of the stretcher is three quarters and it's constrained between both sides. Select a check mark to move on to creating your extrusions. Rotate the cabinet to a side view or an isometric so that you can see where you're extruding. The overall depth of the cabinet case is 11 and a quarter. Select the extrude icon and click both profiles to extrude the sides. 
For this instance, I'm going to flip the direction. I want the front of the cabinet to remain the front. The sketch we've created was the front view. I want these extrusions to go backwards or the opposite direction so that the front remains the front of the cabinet. Extrude these 11 and a quarter deep and click enter. Select the check mark. And now we have created our first extrusions. We also want to create another extrusion of the bottom. Show, sketch one, select, extrude, and click the bottom profile. Zoom in to make sure it's selecting the whole rectangular surface. Flip the direction and change this to 11 and a quarter. Three parts have now been fully defined. You can see I did not extrude this top strip. The reason being, it's only extruded two and a half inches. Go ahead and select the extrude icon, select the stretcher, flip the direction, and extrude this two and a half inches. I'm making sure that all these extrusions are new extrusions because I want these to be new parts. Before I go any further, I'm going to rename these. Follow the names given in the drawing. This would be case side, this would be the right case side, and in this instance, these parts are different. Uh, they're mirror images of each other, so it's important to note that in the name. This is the case bottom, and this part here is a case structure. Next step is a little bit tricky, but if you follow the steps carefully, it shouldn't be all that bad. Rotate around to the back view of the project. Select sketch and click one of the back edges. From here, flatten out the drawing. You're going to create a rectangle from the center line of the back of the project and drag it to the center of the other side of the project. You'll notice that I've made the back continue all the way down to the bottom edge of the bottom. Again, we're going center, and I infrared a center line up here. You can see it goes an eighth inch past the depth of the dado. And I'm ready to create this extrusion. Here's what this sketch looks like from an isometric. Select the check icon, select extrude, select remove, and select the profiles that we've sketched. Make sure it's selecting all of the profiles. The depth of this extrusion should be a quarter of an inch. We're making it a quarter of an inch because that's the thickness of the back. It's going to ask what to merge with. Select Merge With All. Select the check mark, and you can now see that I've cut a rabbit into the back of the cabinet. There's one error that I just made with sketching this, which happens. I'm going to go back to the sketch. I really want this rabbit to continue all the way down to the bottom. I'm going to add a second rectangle to this because we're going to machine these parts on the table saw. Click the lower left corner and drag down to the bottom. You can see I'm just making an extension to extrude the rest of the material out on the bottom of the case sides. Go back to your extrusion and select that second rectangle. This was an error on my part. I just forgot to add the second rectangular, rectangular extrusion. Select the check mark. Now we have an extrusion that runs all the way from the top to the bottom. There's no need to extend the plywood all the way to the bottom, however. So you're going to show sketch to Select Extrude. 
this time, select only the upper rectangular surface. Make sure you're getting all of the parts required or all of the geometry that needs to be extruded and select quarter inch. Make sure you're on new and the thickness of this again is of one quarter of an inch. Select the check mark and then proof your work. It looks like my extrusion is going the wrong direction. Double click if this is the case and use the flip direction icon to make it go the correct direction. You can now see I have a back end, a dado that runs all the way to the bottom of my cabinet, excuse me, a rabbit that runs all the way to the bottom of my cabinet, and a back that's located in its correct position. There's one piece missing from this assembly, and that's the back stretcher. Flip around to the top view, select sketch, select the top surface of the cabinet, and sketch in a stretcher from the back left corner of the back all the way to the right side of the cabinet. Mention this to be two and a half inches. Select the check mark, select extrude, select the rectangular surface, and make sure it's going in the correct direction. This should be three quarters of an inch thick. Select the check mark. We've now successfully completed creating the cabinet case. Highlight all of the parts, change their color and material. I'm going to use red oak as my material. And I'm going to change the color of these or appearance of these to be the same wood color I use for the face frame. Hide the default geometry and rename the parts. The last two parts I have to rename are the back and the case stretcher. I have now completed modeling all of the parts. Rename the parts studio, case, and create an assembly. Rename the assembly, case, assembly, and insert the case assembly into the assembly file. Again, we don't want to have to mate all of these parts, so highlight all of the parts as they are before you do anything else and select group. Select the check mark and you've now successfully grouped all of the parts. Hide the origin. Open the bill of materials, remove the two default columns, and add both the part name and material. Minimize the bill of materials, open exploded views, and create an exploded view of the project. To create the exploded view, Move the case sides, the stretcher, and the back. You can do these in groups if needed. Do the case sides first. And you'll notice when I drug this, it moved the whole assembly. You need to fix one part prior to doing your exploded view. My exploded view is not working here. It's not letting me choose exploded view. So I'm going to refresh my browser and grow through the steps. Again, go to Exploded View, Add Exploded View, select the cabinet side, select Add Exploded View, select the cabinet side and drag it out in even increment. I'm going to use two inches for all my parts. Negative two. The stretchers, I'm going to move both 